reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, shout for all you are worth, raise your voice like a trumpet. Proclaim their faults to my people, their sins to the house of Jacob. They seek me day after day, they long to know my ways. Like a nation that wants to act with integrity and not ignore the law of its God. They ask me for laws that are just. They long for God to draw near. Why should we fast if you never see it? Why do penance if you never notice? Look, you do business on your fast days. You oppress all your workmen. Look, you quarrel and squabble when you fast and strike the poor man with your fist. Fasting like yours today will never make your voice heard on high. Is that the sort of fast that pleases me, a truly penitential day for men? Hanging your head like a reed, lying down on sackcloth and ashes, is that what you call fasting, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the sort of fast that pleases me? It is the Lord who speaks, to break unjust fetters and undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke to share your bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the man you see to be naked and not turn from your own kin. Then will your light shine like the dawn and your wound be, wound be quickly healed over. Your integrity will go before you and the glory of the Lord behind you. Cry and the Lord will answer. Call and he will say, I am here. The word of the Lord. A humbled, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. A humbled, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. A humbled, contrite heart, O oh God, you will not spurn. My offences, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? A humbled, contrite heart, O oh God, you will not spurn. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled, contrite heart you will not spurn. A humbled, contrite heart. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John's disciples came to Jesus and said, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of mourning as long as the bridegroom is still with them. But the time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Short little Gospel passage from Matthew today to uh, help us understand the theme of the first Friday, well, the Friday after Ash Wednesday, really the first Friday of Lent. And uh, Jesus particularly being uh, asked to talk about fasting. Uh, what's lovely is that when Jesus is approached about fasting, which is, yes, it's, it's a penitential side of, of, of faith. It's, 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 uh, it's one of those sides that leads us more towards the sacrificial dimension of faith, not, not, not the easiest things to accept, as it were. We understand 
uh, the theme of abundance, uh, why God perhaps would want us to celebrate. I don't quite find it so easy to understand why he would want us to fast. Why would that be good? Uh, and this whole period of Lent is going to ask us in part to look at that theme in our lives and in our world. But what's lovely is that Jesus immediately links it with the reason to celebrate. And uh, in doing so, we've talked about this before, he draws on one of those key themes, not the most used theme in the Old Testament, but one of the key themes that we have to include uh, in the revelation of who God is and who we are as his people. And that's the theme of the bridegroom. The bridegroom. Uh, it's not as used as much as we could say as, as, the, as the image of the shepherd or the image of the king, um, but it is there in the Old Testament and we find it uh, coming up now and again and it, it gives us a, a key component about the way that God's love can be understood, the way that we can be understood in a covenant with God as in a marriage because a bridegroom means a marriage, means a bride. So putting all those together, we've got the reason to celebrate. Any of us who've ever been, I'm sure, at least to one wedding in our lives, uh, have sensed the sense of, 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 of jubilation, of love. Uh, our hearts are fully involved. Uh, we, we, feel, we feel we're caught up in something wondrous. And it's right that we should be, because that wedding, properly understood, is just a sacramental sign. It's, it's a hint of the eternal wedding of heaven the wedding between God and all that God has created uh, most especially his creatures uh, and and that's then lived in a very particular way uh, as the wedding the marriage the covenant between Christ the bridegroom and the church his bride uh, and that's the reason to celebrate so Jesus uh, as he always does masterfully uh, copes. This isn't one of those questions, it's, uh, we're told it's the disciples of John, so it's not one of those questions that's put to Jesus to try and undermine him. This is a genuine question saying, well, we fast, but your disciples don't. It seems it's a very genuine question. So Jesus gives a, a lovely, beautiful answer for it. He says, well, yes, fasting is part of our faith, except there's something new happening right now because the bridegroom's here. All fasting is off. No more fasting. Not for now because there's something else. We need to concentrate on this. The fullness of this revelation is unprecedented uh, and it's, a, it's, it's being revealed that here we are. This is, the, this is the covenant. Now you're really going to get to the heart of it. So concentrate on that and celebrate. Rejoice. Feel part of this wondrous celebration of love. But, he says, there's going to come a time when the bridegroom is taken away. Uh, and we can understand in that a prophetic allusion to the cross. So he says that there will be fasting again, but you're going to understand fasting in a different way now because of what they did to the bridegroom. Your fasting isn't just God desiring you to sort of feel uh, miserable for a while or to feel you have to do without. No, it's, it's part of the sharing of the suffering of Christ when the bridegroom is taken away. And... And therefore, it gives a meaning to fasting, a meaning to all the themes of sacrifice, because fasting is just one physical, to do with food, area of sacrifice in our life. But whenever we love, essentially, we're participating in a sacrificial dimension of life. We're choosing to, to go beyond our own needs and to reach out either to the needs of others or to God. And we could say, and so Jesus is, is giving us a context for fasting and saying the reason you, you will fast in the future in the same way as the reason you will choose to love anyone and choose to sacrifice in any way is going to be because you're sharing that with me, the bridegroom. It becomes motivated by love uh, and it becomes a desire to share in the mystery that God himself uh, in Jesus becomes one of us and chooses to suffer and we can unite our suffering with him therefore. It becomes something powerful. It becomes something redemptive, not just for ourselves, but for the whole world, for all souls. Uh, and we can offer up our share. And therefore, Jesus gives meaning to suffering. He gives meaning to sacrifice. He gives meaning to fasting. He even gives meaning to death because of what he goes through. So there's no more fear in the human life. There's only offering 
and uniting to Jesus. And this is what Lent is going to take us hopefully deeper and deeper into, the life of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the bridegroom. Uh, and we pray for the grace to be able to share uh, part of that call to fast, to, to surrender the physical goods, particularly in food and drink, uh, to be able to offer something uh, to share in this beautiful revelation of Jesus. So let's pray for that grace today and as we go forward throughout our Lenten season.